Hi, I'm Jan Guggenegg. I'm the CEO and founder of Visionary Marketing. We're going to analyze the sales enablement, uh, seismic LXA sales operation and sales deck report from 2020 to 2023 uh, with my analysis and commentary. And I've taken five main items out of this report. We're not going to analyze the entirety of the report, just uh, a few items which I've highlighted uh, from the report and put on these uh, slides. Um, just to start with the methodology, so uh, this study was carried out uh, with 1,000 employees across the UK, which makes up 72% of the respondents, 11% in France and 12% in Germany. So we have to keep this in mind. It uh, allows a bit of comparison between countries, well, with a... Um, a little bias on the UK though, so we, I'll stress a few points about this uh, and about uh, the sales enablement status in France mainly. Uh, Respondents across a uh, range of industries um, and, 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 and that's fine. Um, a lot of them 90% of the respondents are sales directors, chief growth. So we're talking about uh, top executives in, this, in the sales organizations here, and that's uh, uh, worthy of note. Uh, one thing is also worthy of note is the evaluation of the sales enablement market at $508.9 billion, uh, which is a... Uh, an evaluation which is made by uh, LXA in their report, uh, noting that it takes into account both sales tech and martech. Um, so obviously there's an awful lot of things in here and there's a, a lot of overlap as is uh, described in the report on page 28. And I'm not going to go into this, but Obviously, when we talk about size enablement, we're talking about a wide array of uh, software and techniques here. So if I want to summarize this report, well, at least my, my own five takeaways, uh, here they are. And they, we're going to review them in greater detail at the end of the presentation. Uh, here, I'm just putting them up uh, for your perusal. Uh, number one, selling is getting harder. I think everybody noticed. Um, the sales process is getting harder and harder. It takes more steps for you to uh, get customers to get to, to, to a decision. And it makes sense in that context that uh, sales enablement uh, finds its place uh, within the organization. Having said that, we still found 32% which are on either not convinced or not quite convinced that sales enablement means better performance. And I found this a little baffling. All believe uh, in how sales, effective, uh, sales enablement sorry, uh, is effective, but maturity can be improved. And here, we, uh, if you remember the um, methodology slide, we're talking about 72% respondents in the UK where sales enablement is a lot more established than on the continent. Here in France, possibly in Germany as well, uh, sales enablement is only, well, is something new to most people. And recently I interviewed a number of sales enablement professionals, of which uh, Seismic, and uh, which confirmed, who confirmed that in France, the size enablement function doesn't quite exist, well, so it's, or rather, is rather nascent. So we have to take this uh, result here, uh, all these results here with a pinch of salt when we talk about uh, the continent, because there's a, a lot of, there's a great gap between the continent and the US. And I worked in, in US-based companies like Equant, for instance, where sales enablement was known 20 years ago, whereas in fact in most French and possibly German businesses, well, it's not. <laughs> it doesn't mean that the function doesn't exist, it's probably not called that, um, or it probably isn't really sales enablement driven.
But anyway, so maturity is an issue, even in England. So you can imagine what it is on the continent. So there's a, a pain point here. Number three, respondents declare sales and marketing are aligned, but they keep contradicting themselves. <laughs> uh, we're going to see that in greater detail. Um, when you ask them a question point blank, they say, yes, sales and marketing are aligned, definitely. But when you look at the details, it doesn't appear that way. So we're going to delve into, into this a little later. Um, number four, a dire lack of sales professionals. I'm just quoting here. Sales professionals with necessary sales tech data, sales content, sales operations, skills and knowledge. Wow. <laughs> That's an awful lot of things. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised you can't find them. I'm not sure they exist, actually. They're very few and far between. Um, and probably one of these uh, very weird animals, actually, who have worked in sales, marketing, product development, business development, uh, alliance partner management and whatnot, and, and all these things. But uh, and obviously data management, uh, sales content, now my main business. So. But I can find them very... There are very few people like that. And, and to an extent, well, it's a bit normal. Uh, number five. Uh, most respondents agree that processes and tools drive their content strategy effectively. And that there, there's these tools and, and processes are in place. But, but I have a strong doubt here as to whether they are implemented effectively. So, number one. Number one slide is about these demanding clients that are in front of us and that are making our lives a lot more difficult than it, it ever was. Uh, and certainly uh, working hybridly, as it's uh, highlighted in the report, uh, is not helping. <laughs> it's not helping. And a lot of salespeople are actually feeling, well, a bit lost because they are very far away from their prospective customers and I, we, we spend a lot of time actually supporting them, uh, trying to talk to them and it's sometimes very hard for them to liaise with them because they, they don't know how to do this. They knew how to do this, maybe around a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Well, around LinkedIn is a lot more difficult. Yes, of course, they've got this sales navigator thingy, but hmm. This is not always easy. So, um, advancing the um, so is, is sales enablement advancing uh, the organisation's enablement strategies? Is it driving business performance? Uh, they all, most of them agree, seventy percent. Well, close to seventy percent, sixty-eight percent. But at the same time, I still find sixteen percent who strongly disagree or disagree with a statement weird. So, um, now I understand that maybe it's not, it's probably not the tool itself, it's probably how you implement it, or how you use it, or how you demonstrate how you can use it effectively. So it's a matter of implementation as always with tools as it was with CRM when we first implemented that 25, 30 years ago. Same difference. And 16% are neutral. There seems to me an awful lot of people who are sort of sceptical about this. Uh, even though, as we saw, the clients are demanding, there are many, many more interactions now. It's 47% thing that there's 10 plus uh, interactions with the average customer before they actually land a deal. But this is actually huge because obviously here we are um, adding um, apples and oranges. And... Uh, they are complex deals and they are simple deals, but uh, if the average is 10 plus, I mean, it sounds like a, a very complex deal. Um, that is weird. And, and this is very consistent with what I see in the field, is that everything is progressing towards uh, complex selling. And, uh, and obviously, this is something that uh, most of these people are not very well equipped uh, to deal with. Um, Yes, yeah, so uh, all agree as well with the fact that uh, everything is becoming more complex. So <laughs> complexity is definitely on the agenda. Thank you very much. This is uh, today's uh, 
uh, uh, this is our lot today. Uh, Says is changing, undeniably, and uh, I like this quote by Liz War, Global Director of Says Enablement at Crane, uh, where she said that the planning investigation and discovery phase is, is probably one of the most important aspects of any customer engagement. And I really do agree with that. Uh, to me, it's not uh, so much uh, sales methodologies or closing methodologies, because most of the custom, uh, most of the sales people that I work with, they're really stuck with the early stages of the sale. It's just finding new prospective customers, finding new deals, finding new opportunities, or even sometimes creating these new opportunities on behalf of their customers. They are really struggling with that. And they are struggling with the early phases. And this is certainly an area where sales enablement uh, plays a definite role. Um, sales enablement maturity, as pointed out in the exec summary, um, is certainly, well, there's certainly room for improvement here. Uh, first things first, they, the LXA and seismic measured uh, these 5P model. Uh, for the maturity planning and maturity, people and teams, platforms, process, pioneer and pilots. And regardless of all these different categories, I mean, it all stays right there in the middle, three out of five. Um, so, seems like, uh, yeah, sales enablement is definitely the thing that can help us drive business, more business. At the same time, a number, one third, are a bit sceptical. And finally, maturity hmm, could do better, in the words of my own math teachers. And even though we're talking again about 70% respondents in the UK where seismism enablement has been around for a long time. So, um, seismism enablement, where does it fit? Uh, then the survey actually has measured uh, the different phases of um, uh, sales and um, where it, 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 it matters most is consideration, acquisition and post sales and service, right? Strangely enough, awareness has not been coloured red here. Well, it should have, because it's 44%, which is not far below 47%. And certainly in terms of awareness, sales enablement plays a role mostly with regard to content strategies. And content is really a very big part of sales enablement nowadays. It probably wasn't when I started in that business. It wasn't even called sales enablement 40 years ago. Content wasn't even part. It wasn't on the agenda. Now it is... Uh, absolutely obligatory because you have to use content to raise awareness with regard to the customer's pain points. There's nothing new here. We have, uh, we have had uh, um, Michael Bosworth um, solution selling since 1992. But uh, because of this sales process becoming more and more complex, uh, value selling and, and solution selling are becoming uh, central to the sales process. And therefore, awareness, prospecting and using content are really intertwined. I'm a bit, wor I'm a bit worried here that I can't see it uh, on top of the agenda because to me it really is where um, uh, it, it really hurts in, in the sales force. Um, right, um, so what are the biggest barriers to driving your organization sales enablement? Lack of staff and resources, and lack of sales tool adoption. Okay, so we've got the right tools, we know that they are important, but 45% of them say, right, we're not using them that much. So obviously we need to de delve deeper into that, but whoever has implemented sales systems, and I did this throughout my life, knows what it means. Um, and here I think I've got part of the answer, and the answer we're going to find in the next few slides. And it boils down to 
sales and marketing alignment or it should be sales, marketing and the rest of the company alignment because sales and marketing, not enough. Right, data quality. Well, yeah, okay, we've written about this for years on end and data quality is an issue with sales, obviously, uh, with so, so much data being renewed every year and the quality of the files being so poor and obviously it costs so much for you to update them. So it's bound to remain an issue. I don't think it's something that will ever disappear. Um, but the lack of necessary governance, I think, is, is one of the major issues as well. It should have been uh, highlighted here as well. So, where does alignment fit in? Well, uh, that was very, very confusing, I must admit. Um, I looked at uh, some of the answers uh, in, the, in the report. And uh, number one... Uh, answer was, uh, number one question was, uh, where does the primary ownership of the size and open function sit within your organisation? And 35% of the response say, well, chief size officer. Well, we have 30% almost, should have been read as well, executive leader. And then we have chief revenue officer. So in a nutshell, if we take sales and uh, top management, well, we almost got them all. And and there, over there, on the left, I can see Chief Marketing Officer, 10%. Wow. <laughs> it's funny because I work with some companies where I see marketing taking the lead in this area. And it's understandable to an extent because there's a lot of pressure on them to generate more leads. So it makes sense that marketing be more involved in uh, finding, uh, in, in making size enablement work. Uh, for not only for the sales force, but uh, for the entirety of the company. And the other question was, how would you describe your organization's split of responsibilities? Well, it seems to be sitting in, you know, same uh, part of the business. Sales, top management. Oh, there's 30% with a split of responsibilities here. Well, still, it's a small 30% here. Right, and uh, uh, Liz War has got uh, another point here about this. Uh, still, global director of sales and agreements at Crane. Um, it's in, she, she say, sales and agreements doesn't just land within sales, it should involve the whole business. And I think she's got an, a really good point here. It's not even a matter of sales and marketing alignment, but that's probably where it starts. But it's a matter of really aligning the entirety of the company uh, with regard to focusing on customer needs and customer satisfaction. We keep talking about customer success, but I see very little of that in the field. So, alignment, really? <laughs> Everybody thinks that sales and marketing is aligned. So, why aren't marketeers more involved in sales when we're talking about complex sales wait well, wait a minute so we're, we're getting back to this skills issue which i highlighted earlier on we're asking sales people to become well i don't know content providers uh strategists and you you know what but wait a minute <laughs> marketeers do that and they can help sales people do that as well besides I think that marketing should focus a lot more on sales than it, than it did in the past. It should, when I started working in sales, uh, we used to take marketeers and take them to their customers and, and they would listen to the customers. And it seems like uh, maybe it's not done very often. That's not something that I see very often in the field when I talk with my customers. And I say, do you come to see customers very often? Do you take part in meetings and sales meetings and others and do you pick your customers brains and and I hear very little of that so I think it's it's high time that marketeers change the way that they work and it's high time that sales actually start working better with marketing so, and, and that maybe 
a good idea would be to stop calling that marketing and sales, and maybe we should find a a a, a portmanteau size sales and marketing or sales sales kitting. I don't know something like this to ensure that uh, everybody works in the in the same team. Actually, that's the essence of ABM, if you know what it is, account based marketing. It's an area where marketeers and uh, sales are heavily f- focusing on deals and account planning together, not as a, a separate entity and, and trying to align each other. They are actually working together, which is a lot more effective. And actually, we're looking at uh, uh, which of the following departments uh, would you describe as being involved with your sales enablement ecosystem? So we see sales is very much uh, involved, but marketing is only 53% involved. Okay, f- fair enough. I suppose they have other things to do as well. Um, growth, revenue, and commercial. Okay, fine. That's sales again. Human resources, well, doesn't seem very involved. Um, product management, well, once again, a, a lot of ideas can be uh, taken from the field and co-creation with customers and everything like that. Uh, customer success. <laughs> Going back to what I was saying, I mean, how can customer success happen outside uh, the sales enablement process? I mean, I, that is very weird. I think there's something broken in our organizations. And it all boils down to the fact that throughout the years, we've um, siloed all the sales organizations we had inside sales, we had business development, we've had uh, product development, we've had uh, uh, marketeers have done things on their side with inbound and outbound and whatnot, and sales have done other things. And now we have a sales enablement cons- uh, t- t- implemented as, a, as something on the side, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't, and it shouldn't be organized that way. I think there is something that what, what this survey points out is that there's something really uh, malfunctioning with uh, the way that organ- sales, organiz- sales and marketing organizations are working. And, and it has to be uh, really reorganized, I think. And, and all this silo uh, effect of uh, having different kinds of salespeople who actually look narrowly at their issues and then don't talk to their neighbors and I see that with with some of my customers and they say no, no this is my uh, BDR remit and you know and we, it, it's sometimes very weird because we're trying to uh, hook up with customers who are well yeah, they're not actually customers they are would-be customers maybe actually if one day we can actually um, understand what their pain points are so I mean, we're working very well on their verticals so to start with that's a very difficult thing to do in most businesses because people tend to think broadly and they don't they, they, they don't think as uh, you know by, by 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 industry and looking at the icps and persona uh, within within these uh, icps and 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 at the same time, we have BDRs doing their thing on the side, marketing, doing inbound marketing without talking to others. And all these guys running around like a headless chicken trying to land more prospective customers, deal, leads, or, or or even close deals, even though they haven't even yet opened them. So very weird. I think all these people are actually working in silos. And this has to be done away with. And if you want to work properly with sales enablement, sales enablement is a tool to change that and to make people work together. It doesn't doesn't mean that there shouldn't be any inside sales. Of course there should be. But these should work together uh, as a team and and be uh, aligned before actually uh, uh, going going to work and calling anybody on the phone. Right. Uh, so, the um, good thing is, everybody seems to be aware of the product offering. So we're off to a good start. Having said that, I'm not really sure that this is where the problem is. So, is that a talent issue? That's what uh, our respondents are saying. 
72% of organizations strongly agree, agree with the fact that market is lacking sales professionals with the necessary sales stacks, data, sales content, wow, sales operations, skills and knowledge. Good luck with it. There's a lot of things. I mean, I, I've worked in, in content all my life and, well, almost, I mean, the last past 28 years, I mean, amongst other things. And um, there's one thing I've, I've put large teams of, of bloggers together in large businesses. And uh, I always manage this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, turnaround in the organization because that was relatively easy. There's only one kind of population I never managed to do it with, and it says, <laughs> well, because, because it's not part of their, uh, I don't know, it's a matter of culture, I suppose. I really can't explain that. But it's, it's more difficult with sales. Getting sales to do content is a lot more difficult. Uh, it's a lot harder to push them to do this as well because they, well, they have other fish to fry. Um, and I've been torn on that issue for a long, long time. Should I impose it on them that they have to do content? I know that there are authors like uh, uh, Tony Hughes, whom I interviewed uh, some time ago, uh, who co-wrote Take Pat Says, uh, who think that they that salespeople should be become content providers. <laughs> and honestly, I think in smallish organisations, this is something that you can possibly achieve. Uh, mostly, if you have uh, consultants or knowledge workers, well, that's easy. If knowledge workers is fine. But if you have sales, a population of salespeople within a larger organization, and here we're talking about larger organizations, I don't think this is really workable. At least I never managed. <laughs> so it's, it's quite hard. And I'm quite good at getting people to blog. So uh, I can tell you, I've tried it a couple of times and it doesn't work. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm really torn on that issue. So I'm not sure you're going to be able to find people like this. So I'm going back to my idea of getting people to work together rather than trying to make them, well, be jack of all trades because I don't, I'm not sure it works. Now, when it's uh, a matter of upskilling this case, the sales force, there are different things here like personal selling skills, which keep coming back with sales techniques and deal closing, negotiation and all and the lot. But obviously all these are important. And I, I, I'm not debating that because they're obviously very important. But I don't think this is where, where uh, salespeople are really uh, facing trouble at the moment with this uh, complexity and increasing complexity within the sales process. The real issue that they are facing at the moment, and this is, this is my, these are my two cents, so <laughs> my personal opinion from what I see in the field um, is I see a lot of salespeople lost in, the, in this process. They're, they're trying to sell new stuff. They see that the process is getting harder and harder, that they have to convince people in a different way, that coming back with their features doesn't work anymore, mostly when they want to sell new stuff and they, and they have more complex sales to achieve then obviously they have to focus a lot more on the customer pain points and how you solve them and becoming trust, trusted advisors, as uh, David Meister uh, described in his uh, uh, eponymous book. Um, and, th and this is really where they have an issue. So to me, understanding customers, ICPs and personas, 54%, is really where the truth hurts. Uh, so obviously here we, we interviewed, well, LXA interviewed a lot of different people. Uh, so they have obviously different kinds of sales from you know, the least to the most complex kind of sales. But I really find that th this is where the real problem is everybody wants personal selling skills to be taught, but understanding customers is more important even if you're not a, a, you know, a selling fox, <laughs> to use uh, Jim Holden's uh, terminology, uh, you can be a good salesperson if you understand your customer better 
and that you're able to solve their issues with your solutions. So, um, and obviously in certain areas, depends where, where is market and competitor awareness is, is important. And this is also an area where sales enablement can help. So as I said, sales driven content is really important. And it seems like everybody else agrees. Um, even though 12% disagree. So that's good news. So that's uh, 88% who think that it's either important or neutral. Well, it's being neutral sounds a bit weird to me in so far as, as I said, when deals become more and more complex, you have to be more aware of the context of sales before it happens and sometimes you must even be able to pinpoint problems even before customers uh, have realized uh, that the problem existed so what are my five key takeaways from this report well first and foremost selling is getting harder and harder well that's undeniable and everybody agrees with this and everybody's having a tough time at the moment and I'm afraid this is not going to go anytime soon. Sales enablement fits in perfectly in that picture because it's a tool which can help better prepare your deals before they happen. So before you start closing like mad, trying to understand your customer uh, customers' problems, pain points, and possibly requirements when they, when they already exist. Yet, we still have a lot of business, businesses where sales enablement is not taken seriously, and I think this is worrying. Now, when we talk about the continent, wow, that's a lot more. We're still in the evangelization phase. So we are miles away from this. Uh, one of the things I would have liked to see in this uh, survey would have been, you know, a more uh, consistent uh, sample to be taken in uh, uh, France, Germany. But we could have taken Spain or Italy uh, for that matter. That would have been uh, uh, newsworthy. Number two, uh, all believe in uh, how size enablement is effective. Um, but maturity, well, could be improved. And my, my question here was, is that an issue with sales enablement itself or with a sales approach? I think sales enablement is basically whatever you want it to be. It's, it's, a, it's not just a repository. It's more than a repository. It's a repository and it's a workflow and it's... A, basically a tool, it's, it's a, a meta engine which allows you to basically be more effective with your sales process. Now, it's only as good as the quality of the content that you put in it, both in terms of training, both in terms of sales process, content, um, uh, marketing intelligence, you name it. And obviously, if it's used properly. And as we've seen, there is an issue here as well in terms of uh, the tool adoption. Respondents, that's number three, response to the marketing and sales aligned. Uh, but uh, wait a minute, I see a lot of sales being in charge of sales enablement and very little marketing here. So what is marketing doing? Inbound? Well, if Deals are becoming more and more complex. Inbound is not going to help you at all. Inbound is going to be useful, mind you, but it's going to come on top of what you're going to be able to do with ABM. And if you don't understand it that way, well, you're not going to succeed because you're going to try and use inbound and, you know, sending, casting a very broad net, trying to cash catch very small fish and this is not going to work because there are too few fish to catch in too broad a net. So you need 
to be a little bit more focused, well, a lot more focused, a lot more vertical, as I said, and work seamlessly as a team. So you have to forget about, I mean, I was slightly annoyed with this team sales and marketing alignment thingy. Well, it's time, high time that marketeers start working with sales in join teams and and you know that we stop this uh game of um you know having marketing on one side and sales on the other and then one beating on the head you know my deals my leads are not good you know they're marketing qualified leads they're not sales qualified leads and all etc all of this is useless and, and is not going anywhere and anyway this is where sales enablement is headed is headed beyond sales and marketing, so it's high time that we get this fixed. Everybody seems to think that they're aligned, and we've seen other, many other um, international surveys uh, proving that it's not. So, uh, once again, there is something broken with our sales organisations, and we've got to fix it in the face of these new challenges that we are having now. Number four... Um, yeah, I'm not really sure that this kind of animal, you know, these sales professionals with the necessary sales stake data, sales content, sales operation skills and knowledge. Wow. To me, again, it's, um, it's not going to work that way. You're not going to be able to teach people to know all these things. It's, it's going to be too hard. Uh, and you're going to find too few of them. So unless you have a, only a couple of salespeople, then maybe you can. But, but if you have a, a lot of salespeople, it's going to be really, really hard. It's going to be a lot easier for you to get people to work together. And for you to do that, obviously, you may change the organization, or you may just, just leave it as is, but possibly change the way that uh, all these guys are incentivized together. And... For having worked, I mean, uh, me in marketing and uh, alliance management in sales teams before uh, and key account management in, in the past. There's one thing I found repeatedly uh, unjust, unfair, was that my involvement in, in deals was huge and there's a lot of effort put in. And uh, uh, obviously I was only part of the system, of the sales team, and I only had part of the responsibility for landing the deal. But I had sometimes a decisive um, action, which led to the customer, well, <laughs> buying, you know, for 150 million euros or something like this worth of uh, services. And what I found unfair each and every time was that the salesperson was getting all the money for it. He was getting all the credit for it. And we, as marketeers, were getting bloody nothing. And that was really unfair. Uh, well, mind you, I'm not money obsessed, but, uh, but I find that this is not a good way of motivating uh, marketeers to work in sales teams, uh, even though they're probably less... Uh, money driven and, and salespeople, I think they should be part of the uh, compensation process. Um, right, and all these siloed approaches, I think we have to do away with them. Um, we may keep these different specialized sales teams like uh, Insight Sales and others, um, but they really have to be integrated within. Uh, larger teams and, and, and possibly co the compensation plan can, can work on it as well. But anyway, so if we keep on putting all these sales uh, teams in silos, this is not going to go anywhere and we're going to run into more and more and more problems in the face of this complexity which is growing. Right, um, just uh, as an aside, uh, this thing about... Uh, um, Selling efficiency and sales techniques and being on top of the training requirements, I think, uh, is, is not the right thing. Understanding customers should be on top. This is really where I find that there is a lack of uh, understanding by sales. 
And complex sales is something which is harder than, you know, old fashioned product, sh- product sales. And, and obviously, a very, very few salespeople are cut for it. So um, this is where it happens. This is where you can make a difference um, because very, very few do that. The majority of the respondents, so that's number five on the fact uh, that uh, they have the processes and tools to drive their content strategy effectively. But uh, wait a minute, uh, what I see in the field is a, a lot of room for improvement. Um, I've seen even sometimes businesses very well organized with regard to content production. Um, now the question is, how do you drive sales with it? That's the real issue. So we're going back to square zero. How do you get the right organization to work with this? How do you get uh, your, uh, your content uh, uh, schedule um, uh, aligned with what the sales are actually interested in and, and better than sales actually? Prospective customers, how do you put your... Uh, finger on the pain points. Um, how do you ensure that your uh, your blog is going to be a? And that's the 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 the, the difficulty. Uh, it's a non-selling selling machine. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but obviously a blog shouldn't try and sell anything. And as, that's number one issue. I see a lot of businesses where. They're mixing uh, product content and in-depth content. That's error number one. If you do this, you shoot yourself in the foot. I mean, all your content is worth nothing. Because when we read your in-depth content, we see product content. When we see product content, we see in-depth content. They're two different things. You shouldn't mix apples and oranges. Keep them separate. Then all these in-depth content should not be the one used to sell stuff, to push stuff towards customers. But this is where sales happen. This is the less you sell, the more you sell. And this is where it happens, because this is where you highlight the pain points. And this is why this content strategy is so important and, and relates to all the other items that are highlighted in this report. So I think this is a very important report. And uh, obviously here I, I've only uh, summarized uh, a number of pages but obviously you should read it entirely from A to Z and um, so we're going to put this uh, link in the uh, in the blog post and let you have a look at it and uh, obviously uh, we hope that this will be uh, useful in your implementation of your sales enablement process and tools.